recording. Okay, so we're recording now, full screen here. So this is the community call on the 23rd of July. Uh, it's the Three Musketeers present. Um, I'll let you figure out which one's which. Um, uh, and so we have no new announcements. Uh, everybody's been here before, so we don't need to introduce ourselves to each other. Um, and so what we're going to do... <laughs> is uh carry straight on uh with um uh with the upcoming work priorities so uh one of the first things we do is just say what's coming down the line in terms of pie script um so the first item is from me and that is uh to finish off micro pie test and micro mock i'll be demoing what they are uh, when we come to the agenda items but essentially um with PyDide, you can use PyTest or the built-in CPython um, unit test library to do your testing. There is no such equivalent in MicroPython. While I was ill with COVID last week, I thought this was a terrible oversight. So I have created two modules, one called, and this is absolutely original naming going on here, uh, one called MicroPyTest and the other one called MicroMock. And I will show you those uh, in a few moments. Um, but uh, on my kind of radar is to get those finished off, properly documented, uh, encouraging people to give them a give them a test flight, and they are specifically for MicroPython in in Pyodide. Um, no, the documentation isn't missing. Uh, if you go read the README, there is comprehensive README based documentation. Um, but my hope is, uh, yeah, you'll see in a minute. Uh, my hope though is, and I spoke to Fabio about this yesterday in our one to one is that if we can get them to some level of acceptable maturity and feature completeness, then perhaps we can, as with Chris with your LTK, move them adjacent from my Entol slash whatever on GitHub over to an official repository, as it were. Um, so let's see what happens with that. So that is that. Um, uh, thanks to uh, some guy I know called Web Yoda, um, who has been experimenting with the LLM uh, capabilities that have now been uh, added to the browser-based web APIs. Um, we hope to take the first steps into a PyScript.ai namespace uh, under which we'll be able to reveal uh, browser-based LLM capabilities. Uh, so that's just what you want is your browser suggesting you recipes and things like that. Uh, but of course, it's all the rage. So uh, given that Python is the language of AI on the server, wouldn't it be rather cool if PyScript was the language of AI in the browser as well? Um, so uh, you've got a kind of got a lot of skill transfer going on here, but of course we need to plan this out. We need to work out what the shape of the API is, what the capabilities are. Uh, we have a colleague who seems to think that he's going to be able to compile LLMs directly to WASM, um, and then how do we access those from PyScript? If we can make that easy, that would be rather cool as well. Um, I've also had a chat with uh, Martin today about adding consistent Pythonic web API wrappers around the underlying browser-based APIs for things such as to choose at random, get me my geolocation, um, or record me a sound, or uh, turn this speech to text, uh, you know, do me some speech to text. You know, the browsers are capable of doing all sorts of different wonderful things. Um, and Clearly, someone's thought about this because all of these web APIs are consistent. Uh, no, they're not. Um, so what we want to do is try and make sure that the Python version of this is. So when there is a kind of like an, an asynchronous API, rather than having perhaps callbacks or something like that, we can just say with Python, await the results of this thing. Um, uh, so uh, Martin and I are thinking about that to begin with. And then the next, uh, so that's something else on the radar. And then in addition to that is a whole bunch of invent stuff that I'm going to be working on with um, uh, uh, with Josh. And then we have uh, Andrea is currently looking at smoothing out the shared array buffer friction all over. Um, so Andrea, do you want to just give us a quick heads up on what that is? Oh, he's disappeared. Nope, he's back. So it's not going to be quick. Uh, so if you want to keep talking about 
everything you have to talk about today uh, then we can go to yours stuff. yeah 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 okay let's do that and then i'm sure chris will have lots of interesting uh, questions I'm, I'm taking notes i'm trying yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 i understand okay so we'll come back to andrea's uh smoothing out the shared array buffer stuff in a moment so the actual agenda items for things to show and demonstrate and things uh, i thought we could do two things uh the first one uh chris I, i'd love you to be involved in this would be some europython feedback because this is the first community call since we've all kind of returned from Europython, just to give a summary. Um, um, uh, for me, what was interesting is that PyScript appeared in two of the keynotes. Um, the WebAssembly Summit, I think, went really well. I especially enjoyed the conversation in the afternoon. Um, that fell out of the presentations in the morning really well. Um, and it was good just to hang out with, uh, well, Chris, folks like yourself, we're all in this particular area. It's nice to know that we're, it's not just, <laughs> we're not just on our own and we're all building interesting things. So I, I don't know, Chris, how did you find Europython? <clears throat> Sorry. Um, so I didn't prepare, so I didn't look at the schedule, but what I remember indeed was the, uh, the keynote by Carol Willings. Um, she is, um, one of the go inventors of Jupyter Notebook and a PSF contributor. And she gave the keynote, uh, which was very personal. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, yeah, also that's, that's the nice thing about the Python community, uh, periods, but also the Euro Python one is, uh, mm -hmm. you feel, you feel like they're, they're your family when yes. you're there. Yeah. Um, so Carol had, uh, an, sort of an impromptu keynote speech where she just rambled on uh, the past of all the things that she ran into and especially the discussion she had with uh, you and Josh so Nicholas and Josh uh, the night before so after the WebAssembly summit uh, in the hallway uh, this is the great thing about these conferences you meet people and people met each other and there was a discussion going on and Carol joined and uh, she actually reminisced about that meeting and she also talked about um, the keynote or the, the presentation that uh, Nicholas gave the year before, which she thought was one of the best ones she had seen in Europe Python. And this was like, um, and she had a slide up with Josh and uh, Nicholas's uh, names and also the uh, a screenshot from the presentation from last year. But she kept that up for about like 10, 15 minutes mm -hmm. of her keynote speech. So I thought like, hey, that's uh, very subliminal marketing for <laughs> PyScript. So that was cool to see. Yeah. Um, I think in general, um, I, I still think that we need to do a lot of work on marketing because almost everybody I talk to, I say like, um, I'm building something on top of PyScript. Oh, what's that? Uh, you can run Python in the browser. Oh, never heard of it. So that is something we have to eradicate. This, this, um, like we don't. Like, I, I, that, that's I feel interesting. Like I'm wasting Chris. my time having to explain every time, like, mm. oh yeah, yeah, PyScript is based on PyScript, which is based on web assemblies and runs in the browser, and I'm, I'm just wasting like ten seconds of my introduction. This on is... things that they should already know. So like that, that's a major challenge that we have. So keep sending in presentations to conferences like this. Um, the talk done by Nicholas and Josh at the event about Invent, I think was uh, really interesting. There were more talks. Uh, one was by um, Anaconda contributor or speaker or employee. Uh, about spy uh, yeah so that was Antonio. Uh, yeah a way to make um um python run faster it has nothing to do with PyScript, script nothing to do with web assembly but it's an intriguing way to think about like how can we make things uh, have the benefit of the python language but run at like the speed of like rust or even faster mm -hmm. so it's great to see that kind of innovation happening uh, especially from employees of anaconda which are big sponsors of PyScript continue yeah. to be. Uh, so that's, yeah, it was great to see. Um, question, Andre. Yeah, may, may, I ask, may I ask why Spy is not considered as part of WebAssembly target? So, um, we, we definitely so have It's a great question. 
Um, it's the wrong audience to ask. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. <laughs> Um, no, I, mean, I mean every every programming language that can be statically compiled uh, eventually lands in. in I think it's the S stands it. for static and Pi stands for Pi, so it's probably static Pi or something. That's probably the, yeah. the name. I'm uh, that's the same for C plus plus and C and everything else, right? So you have the static Pi that can compile down to. WebAssembly, that that that's the premises of WebAssembly. They supposed to run anything that can be statically compiled, because that's the that's the premises. So you have a your world uh, yeah. into a statically compiled language that can do. Statically so WebAssembly compiled. is an interesting target for Spy, um, but if I remember, it wasn't working on WebAssembly yet. But that was like. Uh, yes, yeah, so it, it does. It like does. It. It does. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, so two things. Number one, um, Antonio actually created a uh, a version of Python called R Python, which you used uh, to specify how a um, dynamic language would run. You would write that in R Python, um, and this is how PyPy works. And he said to me, "Well, after R comes S." So S Python, so he said, uh, but it's also static Python is that, but that was kind of his funny, funny little joke. Um, but also it does okay. work as WebAssembly because what Antonio does is emit C code. That C code is then compiled uh, to WebAssembly. That's how he started. So um, one of the things that I hope that we could do is perhaps um, complement what Antonio is doing when it reaches a mature enough stage such that um you know pi script maybe it's not it's 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 less of the script but there's more of the pi in spy if you see what i mean but we can at least complement and amplify each other's work and in some way perhaps even work with each other as well um so that you know you might have a static compiled spy bit of code running on a web worker you might have micropython sort of uh, on the main thread uh as the orchestral conductor making sure everybody's behaving themselves and you know pi doing some uh, you know some some standard pythony sort of stuff on another web worker so you could do all sorts of different interesting things like that andrea to be honest i'm looking forward i don't know when it's gonna come if ever but to script type spy is gonna be an awesome <laughs> an awesome thing to to learn. Just for being able yeah. to write that, it's just it's just gonna be all be worth it. <laughs> um so um and another uh, yeah I, I think uh, Nicholas, any presentation that you're involved in is is by definition fun. Um uh, so uh Kudos to that. Thank but you. what I liked was uh, the introduction of Josh. He had a special slide with a picture of Josh talking to Guido van Rossum and basically explaining him um, um, how his uh, edu block system worked and basically training, teaching Python to a newcomer in Python, sort of. Uh, yeah. So that became a running joke, sort of like. Uh, we ask questions of people, like when I give a presentation, we ask them, do you have a slide with you and Guido? And what does he think of your project? <laughs> uh, so that is now the new sort of like hallmark of presentations. Like you, you need a slide with you and Guido in it. <laughs> oh, um, poor old so, Guido. He's going to be photo. You know what? In 2023, when I was- that. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when, um, when uh, in 2023, when I saw him at PyCon, uh, he had on his badge, um, he'd stuck over his name a post-it note. So you couldn't see it was Guido Van Rossum. And on the post-it note, it said, no selfies. And yeah. this year, I wrote a limerick for him. Uh, and I went out for dinner with Guido and some other people. I read this to Guido. Uh, and he kind of went, oh, God, you've not written me a poem. But this is this is the poem. It's a, it's a, it's a limerick called, no selfies. And it goes like this. Uh, said Guido, a programmer Dutch, I really hate selfies as such. I might be your hero, but to me it means zero. Please leave me in peace. Thanks so much. But Guido, you're really a saint. When meeting you, I feel quite faint. I want to shake hands, rise above all the fans, be your best buddy without restraint. Oh God, just please make it stop. These programmers really must drop. 
the deluge of thanks, autographs and cranks, else PyCon for me is a flop. And so there we go. That was my kind of poetic contribution to... Uh... <laughs> Is that, I'm so is that happy that I didn't take a selfie at PyCon with um, when I demoed PySheets to Guido. Uh, ah, <laughs> you need to take it. Yeah, you need to take the selfie. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're a Python. It's interesting you said you need to keep explaining PyScript. Maybe it's um, not survivor bias, but you know what I mean? Because people know that I work on PyScript. Maybe the conversations I have with people who know me, they already know that I'm working on PyScript, so I don't need to explain it. But one of the interesting things I found at PyCon US especially is that lots of people had heard of PyScript. And I heard the same thing at EuroPython as well. But again, that might be a kind of like bias according to the people that I tend to talk with these, at, at these sorts of conferences and things. But um, yeah, I agree with you. We can always uh, do with more kind of like marketing help. And on that note, uh, every Wednesday at a similar time of day, um, so for those of us in Europe in the afternoon, late afternoon, there is a community engagement call um, and we have folks there who actually have a background in marketing and we're starting to put together a plan about how do we improve our presence within the wider Python community, video tutorials we might want to make, the sorts of people we want to engage with, all of that sort of stuff. So that happens every week on Awareness Day. So a little bit of an advert there. Um, okay, let's move on to... Another thing, uh, okay, one yeah. final final summary of EuroPython. Then. Yeah. Uh, there was a talk by um, a co-founder of Pydentic, uh, Mr. Colvin. Yeah. And he gave an overview of UI uh, solutions for Python, and in particular, selling his own idea, which is of fast course. UI. And um, I spoke with him right before the presentation, and I said, like, have you heard of PyScript LTK? Uh, he hadn't, so I showed him, and he's like, whoa, that's interesting, because it's all like Python generated in Oh, cool. I'll add it to the slide. So he added it to the slide, and that was included in the presentation. So. Bravo. That's the nice thing about being on site, right? Yes. You have the opportunity yeah. to uh, meet with people and talk with people. Yeah. This, uh, this is why so this that is, is good. Oh, I also went to the um, a talk, or actually a panel of contributors to Python, so uh, Python contributors. And I asked a question there. I said, like, one of the things that, um, so I, I work on PyScript, uh, use PyScript, and, uh, and um, I said, one of the things that we care a lot about is startup time of PyDite in the browser. And uh, what we want to do is like not bring down the entire uh, Python VM, but all the libraries and all the batteries that like, we just want to have a really small battery, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so now we, we it's either or. So you take the whole world, like CPython, so PyDite, or you take uh, a minimum, like the smallest Python you can imagine, which is MicroPython. But it's um, it brings in extra complexity because you have to think about it now. So what I really want to do is use the real CPython, but make it more modular. So it starts up, it doesn't have to download the whole world and then instantiate the whole world, but mm -hmm. do little parts. And finally, the, uh, the the final conclusion from the panel after a long answer was, uh, it's hard and we won't do it. <laughs> um, and it's because, uh, yeah, it's it's too old. Like yeah. CPython is too big, too old, too, too interconnected. So you can't just remove one module because it's imported by another module and yeah. it's touched by this module and it has to run in this order. And so as soon as you, you start changing anything of the um, composition, then uh, things will, yeah, Chris, this, the, 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 this reminds me of, um, what is it that the, the saying where it says all computing architectures tend to eventually become big balls of mud? Um, where everything is just oh, okay. you know, uh, uh, interconnected <laughs> and uh, and what have you. It doesn't matter how clean it started at the beginning. After ten Entropy, years, yeah. after ten years, some you know the third third generation of developers can't remember what the first generation of de developers were doing, and it just 
you know, people have reinvented things, not realizing that it's already existing and all of this sort of stuff. You, you end up with a big ball of mud. And so uh, that the thing to do is prepare for more than mud. <laughs> There's a similar quote by Jamie Sawinski is that every program uh, will grow until it can send email. So, uh, <laughs> so of course, PyScript can send email from from day from one because it, yeah, yeah. you can use Python, but that's uh, that's another yeah, yeah. parallel of that. Yeah, I like yeah. that. Okay, so uh, I like the conference. I, I would recommend anybody watching um, this recording uh, to also attend yeah. a future one. Yeah. I think You're... next one, uh, we should have a booth, like a PyScript booth at mm. EuroPython. Yeah, 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 yeah. There is a talk about that. I, I'm actually involved vaguely in the organization of EuroPython. Um, so uh, I can help do that. You know, the, the WebAssembly um, Summit was the first summit ever run at EuroPython. So we should have perhaps a community booth section. Um, and PyScript could be perhaps the first community booth in 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 that let, let let's see what yeah and, let's see what happens and do a tutorial for instance that would be great yeah yeah like, right? yes yes, yes. Your own PyScript application in a day or something yeah yeah definitely well if we can get invent and ltk sort of rock solid by then we've got some really really good material that folks could um could use you know beginners could be using invent more advanced users with ltk and and, and all of that that good stuff i mean to, to, to kind of conclude this section on euro python um, for me, EuroPython is perhaps my favorite PyCon. It always has been. It was the first one I ever spoke at back in 2009, I think, 2010, when it was in Birmingham. Um, but the thing I love about EuroPython is that it is still very community-focused, whereas PyCon US, I find, is a bit commercial. Um, EuroPython is still very much community very friendly it's like you said chris it's like being with your family as it well, well assuming you've got a nice family but you know what i mean it's the sort of family you want to be with um and here's the other good thing is that it's held in europe which means that uh you know it's held in fun places like prague or florence or bilbao or wherever else it ends up going so there's a good chance that uh wherever they go and run europython it's going to be a good holiday destination for july which is when uh, um when they run your Python. So, okay. Um, the next uh, item is me talking about uh, micro PyTest and micro mock. So I'm going to st start sharing my screen. I'm going to be very, very quick. Um, ba -ba -bum. Screens. And I will ask my question before uh, you do it. Okay. Instead of after this. The question is why? Why? So, because yeah. I need a test framework in micro Python. That's why. Yeah, why? Why do you need that? Um, because I want to make sure that I uh, I like writing tests for my code because they make it safer for me to make oh, yeah, changes. That, uh, you, of course, you want tests, but but why do you need a new framework? Why can't you just use unit tests or by tests? Because those aren't built into MicroPython. They don't work. Yeah, but you can run them somewhere else, right? I could run them using PyDide, but there are differences between PyDide and MicroPython. Um, and so it means that, say, for example, Invent Good. that runs in the yeah. MicroPython is okay. design, yeah. yeah, like okay. that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So there's, there is that, but it's also the fact that the actual unit tests uh, run so fast on MicroPython uh, rather than having to start PyDide and start PyTest and blah, 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 as I'll, 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 as I'll demonstrate. So if, um, if I share my screen, that's my calendar. You don't want to see that. Uh -huh. So MicroPyTest is currently sitting under Entol MicroPyTest. Uh, here's, a, here's a rather extensive readme. OK, uh, but essentially, um, you know, you, you just await pytest.run a directory in which your tests are um, and you just write them as you would normal tests and you test something, you assert it and then you may even give a message at the end as well. There's a skip just like in, in regular pytest um, and also erases um, function, um, context uh, handler as well. Um, for making sure that things happen, uh, that exceptions are uh, raised as they should. This is an example of what it looks like. Um, and uh, that's it. There's not a lot there. If you go and have a look at the code, it's how many lines? 323 lines, but a lot of that has, you know, comments and things like that in it. There's not a lot going on. 
here. But please take a look. Uh, tell me um, uh, if there's anything you spot that's a problem. But essentially what happens is um, we, uh, we discover the tests. Uh, so they sit in test modules and test modules have test cases and test cases can be run. Um, and essentially, I'm just iterating over all those things to give us the test results. And that's essentially it. Um, micro I'll show you in a second. Um, oh, you have a demo. Cool. Yeah, I'll show you in a second. Because the test suite for MicroMock is actually written using micro PyTest. So micro mock, uh, we need a mock, uh, or some of our tests might need a mock. What's a mock? Well, um, it, it tells you uh, here. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so mocking in code, a mock is simply something that imitates something else. Okay, and we use it in unit tests when we want to not have to set up a whole database or a this, that, and the other. Uh, and it also mocks um, record how they are being used as well, so that we can uh, inspect um, that. Say, for instance this thing is being called in the expected sort of a way, as it were. So an API endpoint or a database or something like that. So again, a whole bunch of documentation, uh, but essentially you in, 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 import a mock object. You can uh, tell it that it will always return a value. Um, you can call the mock object and it will return the value and so on and so forth. And it will tell us how many times it's been called. It will even tell us what it's been called with and things like that. And then patching is how you can start to replace things that are currently built into your code with uh, with a mock or something else. Um, so for instance, we can decorate a test function with a patch decorator and we can say that this function in this module in this package uh, needs to uh, basically be a mock with the return value of 42. So then we can import that. That is now the mock. We can assert that it is uh, the, the expected mock object and it actually behaves in the right sort of a way. Alternatively, patch works as a context handler as well uh, and works again in a similar sort of a way. But once you fall out of this function and once you fall out of this particular context, um, the, uh, the the target tests a package, a module, a function returns to being what it should be rather than the mock object. Now, like I said, all the tests uh, were written um, in, uh, well, let's look at the test patch. Um, so import PyTest, import sys, import patch, etc. Um, and so I'm doing a, it, the micro PyTest discovers uh, the pattern. The default pattern is test underscore something or other. So it will introspect the module, find the test functions and do all of that. There are also sort of set up and tear down things that you can uh, create as well. Should you need to, I'm going to patch a thing, test it. I can assert something and what have you. What does that look like when you run it? Well, where's my Visual Studio code? Uh, if I go look at this, um, bum, bum, bum. You'll be able to see it. There we go. That's how fast it is when it runs. <laughs> it's so fast that the two decimal points that I'm using for measuring the amount of time it takes um, aren't enough. Um, so uh, and there's yeah, and that's it. Um, so I, I'm I'm pretty confident that it, it worked that, that the mock um, uh, micro mock works well because it's passing all its tests. So that's uh, that's basically it. Uh, let me stop my sharing. Um, are there any questions? There are. Andrea, yeah. go for it. This is awesome. And uh, I wonder if it works with PyDi2 because it might make even tests with uh, either MicroPython or PyDi. Uh, you can switch between the two of them. Yeah, 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 yeah. I switch between the two of them and I don't, I don't see why this should be confined to the MicroPython world. Um, this can be, like, like you said, right? It, it's just, I want to assert stuff works and, uh, and that's yeah. it. Um, so, the, 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 yeah, yeah, I, no, I've not, I've not it. tried, but it's something that I do want to do. The, um, the way MicroPython imports and where it puts its modules is a kind of an implementation detail. So I might need to uh, put a conditional there depending on which runtime we're in. Uh, but I'm, I would say I'm 90% confident that it won't take long to make it work for both because it is just vanilla Python. Um, there's nothing particularly magic happening under the hood. Um, 
So, um, oh. yeah. Uh, and and what was what's interesting, and this is what I, this is one of the reasons why I love being a software engineer is the, hmm, not aesthetic aspects of things, but you want to create a nice API and unit test dot mock and pytest both of these apis they are massive okay they are huge uh, pytest has a lot of dynamic stuff that goes on lots of really funky features but actually 99.9% .9 of the time i just want to assert that foo equals bar when i've called baz or something like that and so to look at what the pytest api is and then to kind of put it on a diet and shrink it down to what are the core things that people want and how can I implement that in as simple and a kind of expressive way as possible is a really fun thing fun thing to do same with mock as well mock has lots of kind of edge cases um I'm not interested in those edge cases um really but Andrea sorry you've got your hand up I noticed yeah I, I think we Currently, are uh, running a world where MicroPython and PyDad can be together on the same page. Yeah. And having a uh, testing framework that just care about the nitty gritty and nothing else um, seems like a um, useful thing to have. Yeah. So, uh, I, re I really love this project. Uh, and, and, and I've done myself, uh, I tried myself to to push for easy, easier ways to test yeah. JavaScript thing on the web, on the DOM and on the server before. Um, but I think if we can have a feature party uh, between MicroPython and PyLite yeah. in terms of expectations, that would be awesome. And uh, hopefully it shouldn't be too hard. On the, I, I don't think it will be. Don't think it will be. Chris. I have a few it's, questions and comments, but first I have a story. Um, so, uh, unit test, by test started with JUnit. Yeah. Uh, it's all inspired by JUnit. And I know the, the creators of JUnit pretty well. And the story is as follows. So, Eric Gamma and Ken Beck, they were on a flight between New York and uh, San Francisco, I believe. Anyway, it was across the US. And they sat down on the plane and they said, like, so what do we do during this flight? And he said, well, let's solve the problem. And Eric said, like, one of the problems we have is that we're writing a lot of Java code for Eclipse, and we have no way of testing it. So let's write a test framework. And they wrote it on the plane, uh, JUnit, the first version. So their first version was very reminiscent of yours. Like, it was, like, tiny. It was, like, essential, like, like the, the basic functions. But with success comes... Uh, I don't know, obesity. <laughs> so, um, micro, micro mock and micro test will at some point become really big uh, because people will want to have, well, I want to assert equals, but also uh, in, and I want to do almost equals and, and, and so on, so on, so on. So yeah. it will be inevitable that... Uh, you will be at least ten times as big next year. You, you've uh, you, you've brought up a really good point, was, which I wanted to make, which is that this is yeah. definitely early days. What you've just seen is code written while I had COVID as well, which is probably not good code. Um, yeah. So uh, you no, know, this is really cool. I, I I'm actually inspired because I'm going to try it out. Uh, because the way I do testing for pie sheets is uh, I use uh, the built-in unit test that comes yeah. with. Uh, yeah, C Python, so a VS Code uh, test runner. Um, but it runs against a different target. So yeah. if you want to have language specific things, like uh, maybe you, you call an API that works there, but it doesn't work in MicroPython. So you get a surprise at yeah. runtime. You get a variable that acts differently. So um, I'm going to find a way to actually run PySheets tests also in MicroPython, that would be cool. Yeah. Um, the second question I have Fe is... Feedback um, is most welcome. Feedback is most welcome. Just remember, it's early days, there will be bugs, it might not one. work, etc. Uh, et that's, et that's the logic. Yeah. Uh, but what I also see as hard to do is do integration testing in yeah. PyScript. Yeah. So the next thing I want to do is, is run something real, like 
uh, bring up pie sheets, uh, make it click on a few buttons, and make sure that it actually draws draws this. Yeah. Uh, and that's another question. Well, we can use off the off the shelf web testing frameworks, of course, for that. But often you want to poke inside the application a bit mm. and see like what is the state of the program does it actually yeah. uh, create a database connection as well and those kinds of things. Yeah. So that's the unit testing you want to do. Um, yeah. Question, Andrea. Oh, sorry. Do uh, you have a question? Yeah, so we we do test stuff out of play playwright, yeah. but it can be yeah. any any browser uh, 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 on top of my mind that there are so many things that are running on browsers. But playwright is yeah yeah an easy peasy thing to use because you just but it's the uh, in, integration that you also want to test like like what I said. Uh, so for instance when you yeah, have uh, in pie sheets i create something and then i want to make sure that it ran um so it ran yeah. this and, and then i want to make sure that it actually it saved in the database so that kind so of you thing want to be sure it runs and then you want to be sure yeah. It visualizes whatever it is. Yeah. So we're doing this with Playwright right now. I'm not suggesting Playwright is the best solution, but any any automation that runs a real browser out there is a good solution to. Um, I, yeah, I can imagine that uh, Nicholas next weekend you can write uh, a DOM marker, so that we can. Basically, yeah, but yeah. Hey, here's the thing. Uh, it's probably already been right. done with JavaScript, in which case we can use PyScript yeah. already because yeah, yeah, PyScript. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, uh, Andre. Next question. Andre. Oh. So, the DOM mocker is not going to give you what, what the real browser is going to give you. So, be sure you are just a DOM mocker. For that, whatever. No, no, it's an API to a real mock, to a real DOM. So we yeah. render something, but you want it's a to real DOM, 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 and you yeah. want a write or whatever browser gives you the result yeah. of that. Yeah, 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 of course. That real DOM happening because talking in the DOM is uh, slippery slow. I tell you for experience. Um, <laughs> so, experience. So the next uh, question. Yeah. Um, so I have a good way to many questions. I know very. No, this is good. This is good. Keep uh, them coming. So the um, um, unit tests are not just used to run in a in a web browser, right? Uh, they're used in CI/CD and in pipelines. And when you send a commit to GitHub, it runs all the unit tests. So how do you envision running micro micro p tests, py tests, and um, it, it, um, in that kind of environment, like a headless state? Like how would it run that? It, using the tool that Andrea was just talking about. So that we, you know, the browser, um, I mean, that's how we run our tests already. Uh, we have browser-based tests already, don't we? And we use um, Playwright uh, to run those in CI because you can run Playwright headless. So it's using this, the, the, the browser engine. It's just you're not seeing it, really. Um, how that how that works? Uh, clearly, we've got a solution that does that already. Uh, I would need to look at that and make sure I document okay. that so that people can see. Okay, when you're using micro pie tests, this is how you integrate it into your CI pipeline. Um, here's a recipe that gets you start. You know, numpty, very silly, hello world test response equals hello world or something but that it's a ci thing here's a github action that that runs it for you it's a, you know a template for you so that you can just you know copy it and, and get going that's what i but but yeah, the detail yeah, no. the detail the devil's in the details yeah. and i need to figure out the details so yes I mean, yeah so that would be really cool uh if you can do a github action and then run the yeah. micro Python tests, yeah. um, a real Python, Python platform in addition to the C Python ones that I have. Yeah. Um, so I guess, um, yeah. I had another question, but now I forgot it. I want to point out uh, the slide. Yeah, this is the badge from Europe uh, from Python US. I lost my Europe Python one. So ah. Because ah. the the bunny is there. Yeah. The bunny bunny uh, is there. Yes, we need to, try um, to get some stuff. So this is cool. I like this. Good. 
Good. Uh, feedback, uh, oh yeah, feedback my welcome. book was uh, about AI. So uh, I don't write unit tests anymore. Like that, that's for losers, right? Uh, you have an AI that will write unit ah. tests for you. So uh, ChatGPT, can it already generate MicroPython uh, unit tests? Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure I agree with you there. Um, whenever I've asked uh, an LLM to create unit tests for me, it's always come back with stuff that kind of looks all right, but when you read it, it's uh, completely yeah. wrong. Um, you know, uh, so you're, you, you're spending more of your time actually doing a code review of what the LLM is doing rather than writing the unit test that you kind of know does the thing that you want it to do. Um, so uh, actually... An interesting aside, one of the things I did before EuroPython is I created a uh, code space template for GitHub so that you can use PyScript, uh, you can edit PyScript in GitHub using VS Code. And I just happened to have uh, a copilot switched on in GitHub so that I started doing the micro PyTest development as a code space. Um, and the suggestions started coming in actually while I was writing the unit tests. The things that I appreciated were they understood the namespaces and the API shape that I was creating. So when I was doing like test underscore the thing, it would go, it, it clearly knew what the thing was and it had, it was instantiated in this way and what have you. And it was filling that out. But when it came to intentionally testing the object and exercising it in a way that was meaningful, it was less successful at that. But in terms of give me a first draft of the unit test for testing the thing, that is great. You've not got a, it solves the blank page problem. Um, it, it, it does a whole bunch of stuff, but I would never trust the code that it writes straight out of the box. Uh, Andrea. Yeah, what I wanted to say is that it, it feels like we are lacking behind. Not, not just us, just AI is lacking behind. Because if the model doesn't know anything about all the new stuff we are delivering, the model cannot suggest better things to deliver. So it's, it, it's a bit of next year, maybe, PyScript would be easy peasy to bootstrap out of a template Bootstrap out of a, a bit on the dawn on the on the on the server yeah. and everything else, um, but right now we're not relevant enough to be part of any basic model. And but, Nicholas, but, but here's the thing, Andrea. If we manage to do our PyScript.ai, wouldn't it be wonderful if the ex one of the examples that we provided as a compiled WASM-based LLM was for a uh, PyScript bot that understood our APIs, MicroPython, our um, idiomatic way of writing Python for the browser, because we are discovering, for instance, you use MicroPython on the main thread, you coordinate that with PyDide on a worker, blah, 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 blah. So that kind of contextual awareness is built into the LLM. And when somebody yeah. types, you know, give me some code to do a blah, or they're, they're writing their triple quoted, you know, this module does blah, you know, the, the LLM produces the right thing for me immediately. Um, that, that, will happen, that will happen automatically as soon as we write enough code on GitHub yeah. that yeah. has PyScript. It will become a concept that is yeah. that it becomes aware of if yeah. it has enough training data. So all we need to do is write enough training data and put it on GitHub, and yeah. then next year all these LLMs will know about PyScript. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Or we pay them. And somebody has to pay them. <laughs> so but yeah okay that's much longer well but uh, i'm i'm looking at yeah, the time I'm like a micro python based or a pylite based llm that i can access from PySheets, for instance to do data science related yeah analysis like turn these numbers into a data sheet a, a, a data frame filter the data frame convert it generate a picture from it yeah. No, not using this, using Seaborn. Uh, all the, all these kind of questions that people have, and um, and do that without needing a server. I think that domain is so limited that the data science domain. Yeah. Uh, you could train an, a model and have a really small, small distribution, like a couple of megabytes, should yeah. be enough. Yeah, it, it's it, it's going to be an exciting few months. Well. 
this time last year, we couldn't have imagined where we are here with PyScript right now. You know, this time next year, I hope we're able to say the same thing because of the capabilities that we've been able to build in, you know, all of the things that we've been talking about, the potential for AI. I'm looking at the time now, and I'm sorry for being a bit sort of uh, chairpersonish here, um, but we've got 10 minutes left and Andrea has this amazing thing that he wants to show us. But this has been, you know, fascinating conversation and we, we must keep yes. having these sorts of conversations as well. But Andrea, you said that uh, you wanted to show us smoothing the shared array buffer friction. So um, yeah, the floor is yours, matey. Time. Yeah, I don't have enough time to show entirely all the great things. But I were assured that doesn't doesn't feel good right now. <laughs> so you can you can understand where it come from. Anyway, so um, the thing is the most the biggest friction we had around all the biggest complaints we we had or people lost basically people lost just developer lost. Around our offer is shared array buffer. Uh, what that does that error mean? What why that error exists in the first place? And what can people do to solve it? And um, and this has been like a nightmare, a recovery nightmare for me. Uh, ultimately, because I proposed the shared data buffer solution in the first place. So it was like, okay, with shared data buffer, we can have uh, window.document.body.text content equal something, and that works. And that's the only way you can do that on the DOM, on the, on, on the web. And uh, at the same time, I was like, okay, to do that, you need to enable this, 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 and that. Um, and I took for granted that that was the main use case for um, having uh, Python in a worker. But actually, the truth is that Python in a worker can do a lot of stuff without even needing access to the window dot document dot body dot everything else and that was thanks to martin that brought that to my attention and it was like martin what are you gonna do with the worker and it's like yeah, you know uh stuff that doesn't block the main thread and i was like aha <laughs> that actually makes sense so long story short and maybe i can share my screen um, long story short, uh, can you see my whole screen? Please? Yeah, we can see it. Yes. So long story short, I changed the underlying library is actually allowing the window dot document dot body dot whatever. Uh, on the on the main thread, and there are a lot of breaking changes because um, reason being behind the scene, and I'm just scrolling down the reasons I'm doing this. I'm using this new library, and this new library whole purpose is to make it possible. And uh, you you don't need to understand any of this. It's just this library purpose is to make. The, the whole idea about waiting synchronous is something um, on the main thread uh, possible. And so this is actually the coincident next version. Coincident is a library that is going to be a uh, part of uh, Polyscript. Polyscript is the core of um, sorry for the <laughs> jargon around all the naming convention, but these are all just modules, open source modules that are involved into our stack. So Polyscript, and also apologize because my voice is, is gone. Since Sounds very ago. sexy. Don't worry. Yeah. It's, it's very sexy. So, um, Polyscript is the core, is the PyScript core. The Polyscript is the is the module that enables all the interpreters we we use 
and enjoy in PyScript, like MicroPython and PyUDAT, it could allow more. But right now, on PyScript, we are focused, obviously, on Python-related modules. And this is a, an example of what this new way of um, interacting with the, with the world would be. So you see a lot of minus, 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 minus. So there's no need anymore to even check for a standard buffer or anything like that. It, it just keeps going. And if you want to trust and use standard buffer, this is going to work. Um, because we are, we are short on time, um, I just want to tell you live that if I run currently the PolyScript, uh, all tests, you can see that all the um, coverage is gone in, and it's cool. Um, I'm working on fixing last three, one, two, and three. So here you can see the last three things that are <laughs> likely nothing to do with the update on the underlying uh, module. But basically, what the underlying module reveals and allows is that you don't need um, uh, special headers anymore. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Um, you just need to uh, eventually provide a service worker that you can previously you had to provide your own mini coy service worker and blah 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 but right now we have an, a way to provide any service worker so if your project already used a service worker you cannot really incorporate mini coy or any other solution to that but right now if you if you're using um, a proper service worker um, that's gonna that's gonna do something something different. Let me let me try to show what's gonna do. So I'm I'm going here. Um, I'm gonna run this. There was an issue about too many requests, and uh, I'm gonna show you how it's gonna work. Not here. Damn it. <laughs> Sorry. Um, this is because I'm I'm testing on my local host too many service, service worker thing. So, uh, can you see that? Yeah. So yeah. That's 10,000 requests. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. will, no, will, it, it, uh, will anything change in, um, in how things run? Like, I, I understand that um, I don't need the headers and it makes it easier to use uh, so, if you can see what I'm doing, yeah. Are they going to run slower, faster, or other things? or? So, if you have a previous situation, previous situation means you can check. Um, I'm trying to. Um, so, I'm, I'm running a server which enables Koi, Mini Koi, whatever you have that works already. I'm yeah. going to show you the difference. Fine. That's done. So in this case, uh, my code is basically nothing. Um, actually, I can show you my code. So in this case, um, I'm so, testing. So it, it, it was about, I don't know what, 250 milliseconds, right? So a quarter of a second to run it yeah. all. But with but without case, without yeah. Minikoi, it's without, almost 10 seconds. Uh, this, this, even with Minikoi, so this is about um, times it takes to resolve a round trip between the worker and the main thread, um, and this is and this is about having Minikoi enabled or your server is yeah. actually serving the right thing, um, and this is not. So right now this was npm run Koi. Now I'm gonna run npm run server, and the server doesn't have a mini coin. It has the fallback embedded in it, 
um, and to enable that I and mean, to our register whatever I had before clear side data console and you want to see it's kind of slower it still works so in this case I'm what I'm doing is just I'm calling our main thread proxy dot funk thing <laughs> sorry all the time and it's gonna take around thousand requests per second so this was a loop out of ten thousand and it took almost ten, 10 seconds to run it so this is the thing but at the same time is loop and this a solution doesn't require you to have anything like um, cross cross frame uh, cross browser cross cross website cross thing so these doesn't ask you to do anything different from what your previous website was doing before and this is just a different kind of um, loop or uh, is just a different kind of direct access to the main thread that is surely slower but it surely works too so this what you're seeing here is the next version of um, where was I? Uh, here um, we don't have the, the old coincident anymore we are we don't need the um, special flags uh, around uh, is it gonna work or maybe no we, we actually know for sure that this is gonna work work or not so we have a sync main or worker we have a polyfill we have all the booleans things to tell us behind the poly, the, the poly script uh, po sorry, um, yeah, PolyScript project or PyScript after to know what's going on. So there are few things that can work. One is um, there is a polyfill and the user provided a service worker for that polyfill and that service worker is actually um, providing all the um, all the mechanism to 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 make a synchronous interaction possible from worker so that's an extra thing that wasn't possible before before it was like we throw an error and you figure it out right now we have a we have a different approach it's like it's gonna work but it's gonna be if slow you don't have the right headers and you don't have the right polyfill out of a proper service worker that provides that right polyfill maybe you cannot use the window but if your worker code is going to provide any utility that's going to work and if the main is going to use those utilities it's going to work if the worker is going to use any main exported utility it's going to work as long as it's synchronous and I, I maybe I should share again um, because this this part um, might be interesting. So um, if I go to the when can people try this out? Sorry, when can people try this out? Um, I, so the thing is. I'm gonna change to um, to PolyScript. The thing is, if I npm run test, I have full code coverage. Everything. Oh, actually, no, because I'm running a worker in another in another thing. So I have full test coverage. Everything works out of the box. There are three. Unfortunately, three probably hourly the things that are not working. Everything else is working. And right now, the coincidence behind PolyScript is an RC3 uh, version. So it's a release candidate. 
I'm, I'm testing things that should work or bottle script until I see this screen that you can see. Until I see this screen entirely, entirely cool. Um, I okay. won't probably allow or push this thing anywhere further. But at the same time, if, if, if I can check, um, we have test, uh, I don't remember. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm super sorry. I don't remember. But we, we have, I have a lot of tests in coincident itself and, uh, and probably uh, NPM round server. So if if I do this and you see my screen, um, let me refresh this. So uh, I want to remove anything that that like no service worker, no nothing. I want to be sure that this thing is not working. So we have a no. Uh, shared our buffer or service worker. This still works. So you can see that maybe you can see that the polyfill is true. The shared our buffer works anyway, but it's not able to be synchronous because the right headers to make it synchronous are not working. So this what you're seeing here is in. Yeah, is this is this thing? So I'm 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 just I'm just logging polyphenol sync, and I'm providing some function to the main thread. So I have this proxy where I can say, hey, proxy dot sum is gonna do something great for the main thread. And here I am working in booking main. I'm awaiting the main proxy href, and on the main thread. I'm just I just have a proxy and the proxy href is just returning location href and I'm main invoking worker I'm awaiting proxy sign one two three four and what you can see in here is that everything works well I don't have I don't have gosh I, I wish this was clear already but I don't have any service worker I don't have anything stuff just works because I'm not using, um, this is important, I'm not using here in the worker, I'm not using the window. Moment, um, sorry, window. The moment, the moment I try to do this at the end of my, on my worker, um, window document, anything really, this is going to throw because, because the sync is default. But the sync is an exported information that is mandatory to understand how we can throw with errors when it comes to, hey, are you expecting to use the window? You cannot because you're not allowing headers to be, um, to, to, to use full thing. Uh, and actually, let, let me try. Let me try. So, okay. Yes. You lost me five minutes ago. Is uh, um, I think for most of the audience, uh, they will suffer from the same problem. Is that this is really deep down into the bowels of PyScript, right? And it's it's hard for them to imagine like how this would change. So can you can you do in one line summary what the benefit of this work is? Yes. So the line summary is that it's going to be easier for people to write code that works in PyScript and uh, they don't necessarily need to think or take care about headers um, the cool. main yeah. request for this um, uh, change was about how about we allow workers to provide a heavy computation to the main thread so you show heavy computation on your page, your window yep. page, and you don't need to take care about the worker needing to access the window, main, body, document, blah, blah, blah. But then you just ask the worker to do computation, and you retrieve that computation, and you land it 
where you are with the internet and that's it. I'm sorry if I confused you. For me, it's super technical and I, I, I really have hard time to uh, remove the super technical part from the super technical issue. But that's the fun uh, bit. I had to solve. So, <laughs> this is, uh, that was a very good reminder and thank you for that. An example of uh, like sort of the impact that PyScript has, like it, it, it has a very high level sort of experience, but it reaches all the way down into like the lowest layers in the in the stack mm. uh, in the browser, yes. and yes. that yes. is actually a great value of PyScript that we do that. So this is a uh, yeah, it's important to see this work. Yeah, to some extent, you were here. Nicolas is here, so I felt like I should... And this video is going on the internet, so it must be true. So You're right. <laughs> we're, we're, uh, we're way over time, but can I, can I do a 10-second demo? Yes. Okay, please. that Ten is five. the very last thing. Yes. 10-second yeah. demo. Um, so, um, can I actually do this? Yes. Go live. So do you see my screen right now? Uh, it's just coming up. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So this is, uh, for those people who have never seen this before, this is Pi Sheets. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, um, hang on, hang on, hang on. All we can see on, is Discord. Discord. All you can see is what? Discord. Discord. Oh. You're not actually sharing okay, the whole let, screen. Let me, uh, Try again. Let me, yeah. let me share yeah. my whole screen. Uh, signal I know, I mean, yeah. Screens. Here we go. So now, can you see Pi Sheets? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So this is Pi Sheets. It's a web app written in um, in PyScript. So everything you see here is drawn in Python. Uh, nothing new. Uh, Pi Sheet has been around for a while. You can try it out in PySheets.app and see the previous version. This is the new version. So what is different about this one is if I refresh this page um, and reload it. Uh, I reloaded it a couple of times here. It is actually not coming from a database. This is coming from browser storage. So um, PySheets is switching to using browser storage for storing the sheets. And this is using IndexedDB. And the whole sheet is stored there, but also other sheets. So uh, I happen to have four here, so I can go to different sheets. This is an empty one. And this is the second one. So each time I transition between the two, there's like there's no database access. It doesn't go to the server to get anything. This is all from within the browser itself. So this is all running Python code in the browser. It's running all the data science parts. So creating a data frame, this, this code here, uh, creating the matplotlib. This is all running in a worker. And all the data is stored in the browser as well. So I think this is um, worthy enough of a like and a share. Uh, oh, definitely. That. Can, can I just ask, were you, are you directly using IndexedDB or are you using the PyScript wrapper around IndexedDB? Is there one? There is one. Oh man, I just wrote one. <laughs> <laughs> No, PyScript storage. PyScript mm. storage is what you're go, go look at the docs. Storage. Go look at the docs. Oh my goodness. I learned something. Yeah. This is why you come to meetings like this, folks. Yeah. To learn something. But it proves ah. that great minds think alike or fools seldom differ. That's the important thing. We're, we're, we're doing the same thing. Uh, Andre, you oh. have your hand up. Yeah. Py PyScript storage is a key value pair and you can just for any key, you can store anything you're storing at, that's compatible with IndexedDB already. So I love it. I'm going to switch. Yeah, have a look. Uh, it's already there. Um, it actually um, works. <laughs> so then the, the final uh, uh, statement is not a demo anymore. Uh, so I'll stop sharing. Um, is that I will open source by sheets as well. So that will uh, probably happen next week. Uh, wow, Chris. That's that's amazing. Uh, can I ask? I have a favor to ask of you. Uh, can you kind of like do talks about Pi Sheets, your experience, you know, at, at conferences? Um, you know, submit submit this for PyCon next year. 
Um, I, I submitted it to four or five different conferences and nobody is biting so far because um, there's not enough AI in it. So I need to... So this is why we need the PyScript, the PyScript dot AI dot something or other. This is, it's, oh, on yeah, yeah. it's on the roadmap. Yeah. It's on the roadmap. It's on the roadmap. It's coming. Yeah. It's coming. Okay, I'm I, again. Sorry for being chairpersonish, but we've been here sort of an hour and ten minutes now, so um, recording. So uh, I'll, I'll. This has been a fantastic call. Uh, so much good toing and froing and discussion and about all sorts of from the community to the highly technical. It's all been in a part a part of this. So um, thank you very much for contributing. I'm going to stop the video in a second. And then I'll upload this to YouTube and make sure that folks on Discord get get the link when YouTube gives that to me. So, everybody, thank uh, you for watching. Yeah. If you're